tell your mama. Hey, everybody, it's the coach, and this is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we'll see the veteran Joe Flacco and his new team, the Denver Broncos, as they match up with Ryan Fitzpatrick and the Miami Dolphins. With that, let's get down to Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Standing by for the call, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, Coach. From beautiful South Florida, there's a look at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. The excitement brewing here in South Florida as a moment ago. The Dolphins starters were introduced to this home crowd. They're fired up as well as they get set to match up with the Denver Broncos. With you from the booth, Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis. Uh, CDR matchup here. A couple of teams last year that were really pretty similar, both under 500, both missed the playoffs, and they both think that they can turn things around in 2019. Yeah, how about 2018, though? A case of the haves and the have-nots. In 16 game seasons in the NFL, for the first time last year, no one finished 8-8. Eight and eight. Now, you know that in baseball, basketball, other sports, turnarounds can take three, four, five years. In football, could just be a few months. Now McManus on to kick this one off. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here to lead out the offense in his first year as a Dolphin, but 15th overall, it's the bearded veteran Ryan Fitzpatrick. And the new coaching staff coming in, they finally decided to pull the plug on the Ryan Tannehill era after seven seasons and no playoff wins. So enter Ryan Fitzpatrick, signed in free agency, fittingly on St. Patrick's Day, by the way. But last year with Tampa Bay, you remember Fitzpatrick got off to that incredible start. Over 400 yards passing in each of the first three games of the year, 11 total touchdown passes, and now it's his time to do it with Miami. 13 yards on the game's opening play. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. plays have them on the move on first down off the play fake here Fitzpatrick and this will be incomplete physical play on the football there and it's second down a look now at the Miami offense I remember when Laramie Tunsil was coming out of Mississippi and I was evaluating him for the draft in 2016. Ended up writing down a description that I tended to like, and I'm going to use it here now. He's got feet like a receiver. He's got a body like an offensive lineman and hands like a boxer. Put it all together, you got a heck of an offensive lineman. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. This is Kenyon Drake, the fourth-year man from Alabama. Second down, a little more productive than first. Seven yards on the gain. It gets him to third and three now. Well, this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and ten. Nice run on second and ten, and probably everyone was expecting him to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, you a minute two on third down. You're a little off balance. That good for six as they keep this drive right on rolling. That throw is not going to get them a whole lot, but that really didn't matter, did it? They got what they needed on that throw. Picked up the first down, and I'm going cliche here, game of inches, partner. Absolutely. Well, and you talked to me a lot about opening drives, how key those are to set the tone. You kept the drive alive. Third down conversion here is big. White 80! First down, Drake. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Tackled by Bradley Chubb, the number five pick in the 2018 draft. And here's a look at the defense for Denver. Well, let's showcase cornerback Kareem Jackson has brought his talents from Houston to Denver, and the Broncos are really excited about using him all over their secondary. 
primarily a corner for most of his career. The last couple of seasons, he swung back to safety as well and has done a nice job in both spots. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. From the gun, Fitzpatrick. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. I think we'll see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. The seventh play now of this opening drive. This is third and long, though. Working out of the gun, Fitzpatrick. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. Four yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up fourth down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Sanders' kick is good, and the opening drive for the Dolphins yields three. Able to move the ball on that drive. Yes, just three points, but four first downs were in there. Yeah, and you can look at it and feel pretty good about the whole thing and think, okay, this should continue throughout this ball game. On the flip side, if you're a defender, it's almost like whew, we only gave up three. They moved the ball on us pretty well. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. The Broncos head out for their first drive and at the controls in his first season in the Mile High City, a former Super Bowl champion in Joe Flacco. And in Baltimore, they drafted Lamar Jackson. Eventually, he would take over for Flacco week 10 a season ago. So Flacco, out. Well, the Broncos said, we still think he has some time left in his career. They bring him in for some stability at quarterback, something that they really haven't had in Denver since the departure of Peyton Manning after their victory in Super Bowl 50. Now the young man who was a pro bowler as an undrafted rookie, it's Philip Lindsay. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Plays like we just saw there, that's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out. Because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. That catch good for five. It's third down. The offensive starters now for the Broncos. And how about Philip Lindsay's rookie season? Began the year third on the depth chart. Finished it in the Pro Bowl. Not bad for an unrestricted free agent out of Colorado with speed to burn. The Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. Come on, QB, come on. Operating out of the gun, Flacco finding his big receiver, Patrick, over the middle. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. When you give up points on the opening drive, in this case a field goal, you'd hate to go three and out. They avoid that. They do, and it's also walking that fine line mentally, too, as a coach, isn't it? Because you want to emphasize to your team exactly what you said. All right, we gave up a field goal. Let's go back and at least equal that, guys. But if we don't, you don't want them to feel like it's the end of the world, either. Nice that they were able to pick up the first down there, help them relax a little bit. Outright, this one goes to Patrick. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 12 more yards there and another first down. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. On first and 10, it's Lindsey. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. 
And let's run through the Dolphins' defense. One of the more underrated yet valuable positions in the NFL is safety, and Rashad Jones epitomizes what you're looking for. A guy who can drop down into the box in the run game and tackle those bigger, stronger running backs. He can also cover people, whether it's tight ends or bigger slot guys, and that gives him the ability to stay on the field every down and make big plays. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. On second down, a run with Lindsey. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Yeah, once more, a strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 41. Setting up to throw Flacco. Almost able to intercept it. That's one he would have liked to have held on to on his first drive. Instead, second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. Up front, the struggles continue for this offense among the line. What, what can they do? Change the play calling? What? I think part of that, yes, changing some of the play calls, some screens, some draws, some misdirection. You want to run any type of a play that will influence these guys to continue to get upfield and find a way to use that against them and slip things in behind them. So some quick passes could work as well. To pass, Flacco. They set up the screen to Booker. And they're able to get this one past the 30, down to the 25. 17 yards for the Broncos there as they've got themselves a first down. I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Not only that, but that big article in this paper this morning about their philosophy on starting games like you're shot out of a cannon, and that's what they've done. Very methodical here on this first drive. Yeah, so many teams talk about that fast start. We're actually seeing it happen right here in front of us. But now the kicker, can they cap it off by putting the ball in the end zone? First and 10, and Flacco looking to throw. And Sutton hauls it in over the middle. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. They go back to the ground now with Lindsey. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just cash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. And that'll get him halfway there as he takes it from the six to the three-yard line. That run didn't get very far, and I think when you're looking at his dimensions, he's a little bit on the smaller side. He's counting on the big guys up front to escort him in, and they couldn't create any kind of space for him, could they? Yeah, didn't get the push they needed. 15. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. I can't believe they even let you play. They'll run. Here's Chanovich, the fullback. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. And give him two yards officially, and now it'll be third and goal. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D lineman to make the play. So offensively on this drive, two and two on third downs, and now they face a third and inches. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. 
This is a long drive offensively. Wouldn't you hate to end this with just three points? Doesn't it feel like during a ball game you have certain narratives going on and there's certain drives that seem to take on just a bit more importance than others? This feels like one of those, doesn't it? To me, three points here, a major letdown. This is the time to go and put six on the board. Each team with a possession, each team with a field goal as the kick is away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. They weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive down with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Counterplay, Drake. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. Still first down. The full start backs him up five, first and 15. Watch the slant, watch the slant. You go tight, you got tight. They get just two out of it there, and it's second down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. 47 the mic, boy, 47. Check, check, 47. Bring it, bring it. Now on second and 13, Fitzpatrick on the right side open is Gasicki. And getting this chest shot in midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. 16 yards, a first down. Well, from an offense's perspective, that sure was pretty because the corner route, it's extremely difficult to defend from my perspective. What we just saw there, is that sort of the evolution of the tight end position? Yeah, I think it is because more and more, Tight ends are being treated like wide receivers. These are some agile players who can make a play in any spot on the field. They'll run on first down. Drake takes to midfield, but no further. Just a yard there. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one... He looked like one of those guys. Trying to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. 3-3, three, three, a tight one after one on EA Sports. Second quarter from Miami. It's the Dolphins with the football as they're looking at a second down and nine to go. Second down, it's Drake, and he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. Todd Davis, the Broncos' leading tackler last year, up to make the stop. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Fitzpatrick now from the 50. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Drake. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 
The Dolphin passing game rolling here. They've got another first down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Hey, man, hey, man. Watch the boot. Watch the boot. Kill, kill. Now on first down, Drake again. And this time he's not going anywhere. It'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. On second down, it's Drake. Now Drake loses the football. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble. That could have been trouble. All I can say about this play is that someone's living right. I mean, he's trying to gain yardage, trying to get upfield. Ball comes free. It, what's that panic that we've talked about oftentimes that you feel when you yeah, lose the ball? You can sense it. Oh, you can sense it. And somehow he got to it and was able to recover it for his squad. The Dolphins on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and eight. From the shotgun, it's Fitzpatrick. And this is caught by Parker for a Miami touchdown. Devontae Parker, 28 yards. And the Dolphins have taken the lead. And when the quarterback drops and has a guy that wide open in the end zone, his eyes have to get just as big as grapefruits. Oh, without a doubt. Hey, this is the easiest throw you're going to get. And you're going to get the benefit of a touchdown on top of it. Make that throw. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And the lead is now 10 to 3. So that one a long 11 play drive. And it ends with a touchdown for the Dolphins. Touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Let's just feel it at the goal line. And he'll be stopped just shy of the 25 with a penalty marker down. Here's the call. Face mask. Defense. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. So after the face mask, they get to start all the way up past the 35 now. A throw left side to start out. That's complete. Give them a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. On second down now. It's Lenzer, and that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating it. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, because they bring in your tight end, keep him in, your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line, your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. The Broncos on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and ten. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. 
Flacco from the gun. He's got a man. It's Sutton that's complete. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A good pick up there of 20 yards. To go for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and throw it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. They held him in check in the first half, but that's his longest carry of the game right there. So would this be the definition of fresh legs since he didn't get much done in the first half? Now he has a great opportunity. He's taking full advantage of it. Now a pass dumped off to his running back. Now this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. On second down, it's Lindsey. He'll have a first down inside the 10. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. A 21-yard touchdown run. And the Broncos are an extra point away from tying the football game. Well, partner, that was another explosive run. And one thing I've learned in our time in this game, yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit. But for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball too, right? Oh, without a doubt. You need that difference maker lugging the rock. Brandon On here, Brandon McManus for the point after. And he'll put it through, and that evens us up at 10 apiece. That time, a six-play drive, and it was capped off by a Philip Lindsay touchdown run. All level now at 10 apiece as the kick's away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary didn't really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went, no adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, usually gets it done. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Fitzpatrick finding his tight end, Gesicki. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 16 yards, a first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. All day, every day, any day. Play action now, Fitzpatrick. And it's intercepted. Picked off by Bryce Callahan. Defenders giving chase, but I don't think they're gonna get there. And he will score. Touchdown, Denver. Well, partner, I do know this. If you're a defensive back, you have more chances to make a team now than ever because people are using five defensive backs, six defensive back packages. 
not exclusively, but way more than before. That was a nickel package there, and what a pickoff. Why is that? Why are they using that more? Because more people are throwing the ball on earlier downs than ever before. This has become a passing league, and because of that, more defensive backs on the field on most plays. Extra point from McManus is good, and that makes it a 17-10 score. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And last time, decent field position through the pick six. Obviously costly. But they can't afford to just bunker in now. All right, they, good field position means go ahead and attack on offense. Try and press the advantage. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 22, and he will score. Touchdown, Denver. Short throw pick six right there, those linebackers. They love when those short throws come and those eyes get real wide, don't they? How about the anticipation on the play? Reading, reacting, and then the ability to catch the football and take it in the opposite direction. Now McManus to tack on the extra point. And the lead is up to 14. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six, and now the kick is away. Fielded about a yard deep. He's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And they gave up the pick six. And now they'll be looking to right the ship here. Now, as a quarterback, are you a little more cautious this go around? You should be, just because after what you gave up. But you can't be so cautious as to just really take things in, and now you're not going to pull loose enough to give your team a chance to score. And the Broncos get there and take him down. Credit the sack to Von Miller. Well, someone's been up to the task so far in this game. They are already up a couple of scores, Brandon, and guess what? I think they're just going to pin their ears back now and get upfield and get after the quarterback. It's been such an impressive first half to get that lead. The sack cost him only a yard. It's second and 11. Let's go, defense. Let's get out the field, defense. To throw is Fitzpatrick. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. Draymond Jones in there to drop him. And sacks on first and second downs now leads to a third and long. So, Brandon, we sat in with a lot of coaches, and when they talk about things they want to accomplish offensively, I'm not sure that sack and sack are on their play sheet. So now after the sack, third and long, and Fitzpatrick and company, a little work to do. Third and long for Ryan Fitzpatrick. And over the middle, this is Parker. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. On fourth down, Matt Hawk is on to punt. River Craycraft deep for Denver. It's taken to the 26. 21 yards. Well done on the return. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. 
Out there to start their next drive, Philip Lindsay and the Broncos. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, trying to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs, and let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through. A pass for Sutton is intercepted. Picked up by Xavier Howard. And he will score. Touchdown, Miami. You think you're going into halftime with a good size lead? Not so fast. That pick six really changes the complexion, probably also changes the halftime speech. No doubt about it. Instead of going in relaxed, you're probably a little more uptight right now, probably a little bit angry. Let's see if they can get their focus back. Sanders now to add the extra point. He's got it, and it's 24-17. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. This fielded at the two. Turn here, he gets it out to the 25 yard line. The offense trots back onto the field, and we take an in depth look at Royce Freeman, the passing game. They've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that the and he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. The big tank, Tank Carradine with a sack. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. Broncos on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This will be third and six. From the gun, Flacco. Over the middle complete. That's Patrick. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag drop, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. Looking to throw again on second down. Flacco, he completes this to Sutton. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. And it should be the final play before the quarter ends. Barring a flag, final play here for Flacco and company. And he's going to go down. Couldn't get a throw off with the pressure. Maybe that was for the best, as that brings us to the end of this first half of play. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we go up to Orlando now and hand it over to Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. Back and forth, we win in that first half. This has certainly been an entertaining one to watch thus far. And just like that, on we head to half number two. 
Both these offenses have been in fine form. What will the second half bring us as we are underway in quarter three? This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20. Call it the 21-yard line. Here comes the Broncos offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Another run by Lindsey. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. And that's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line. Yeah, defensively, all I'm thinking is that on that play, get me to third down. Get me into a position where I can make one more play and get my defense off the field. On third down, Freeman. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Flacco. A pass for Sutton is intercepted. Picked up by Xavier Howard. And his crew will take over at their own 45-yard line. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drop. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them the contract time. Now the pass hauled in by Kenny Stills, and he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get up field for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, that's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out. Snip. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Oh, free safety blitz. That can be a gamble, but it proves fruitful there. Yeah, you're exactly right about the gamble because oftentimes the free safety is the last line of defense against a long pass. And when he comes at the quarterback, he better get home and make the play. Otherwise, a big play could result for the offense. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. They'll give him eight on the play, and it'll be fourth down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field 
can really generate big plays for an offense. And Denver getting set to take the field. We have seen a lot of points here in this quarter. For oh, us up here in the booth, play. it's been fun to watch. The defensive coordinators probably scratching their heads. Yeah, they're going a little bit crazy right now. But let's face it, all of our friends who play fantasy, <laughs> they're enjoying the heck out of this show because most of them are creating and getting a bunch of points. Yeah, points certainly not at a premium here. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. 10 yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. But I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. They'll wind up losing four yards on the play, and that'll bring up a third down. Ah, uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. The Broncos on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. This is third and four. Now Flacco. And he's got Hireman. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Flacco now, 12 of 15 throwing the ball, 80% so far, and it's first and 10. Here's a throw out wide, complete to his running back right side. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here, and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march off another 15 against your squad. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and 10. After the penalty, here's Freeman. Freeman a first down and more. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Royce Freeman, 52 yards, and the Broncos will extend their lead. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. Now McManus for the extra point. And the lead is up to 14. Just a four-play drive that time. And the final act came from Royce Freeman on the touchdown run. the touchdown here's McManus now to kick it away that'll be taken in the end zone and no run back here this will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25 yard line the Dolphins offense now working their way back onto the field and with this deficit you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away you know what I would tell my offense right here the punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut it. All right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen. If some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. The face mask moves them all the way out past the 40 now for first down. Here's 
Fitzpatrick. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. He was looking that time for Stills, and it's third down. Well, partner, so much for the mismatch. How about the guy at the second level, that big linebacker, able to run with the receiver and make a play on the football? To throw, Fitzpatrick. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. They'll get 10 there, but it leaves him just short for fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Here's Matt Hawk now as he's on to punt for Miami. Set to start another drive, Joe Flacco and the Broncos. The lead is theirs here in the third quarter, but it's really been the ground game that's been the recipe for success. You mean the spotlight isn't shining as brightly on the guy throwing it? No, it's the man behind him that's had a heck of a game. And that's really okay. That's actually what you're looking for. I mean, your pride tells you, hey, I want to be responsible. I want to throw a bunch of touchdown passes. But when you're able to run the football, Typically speaking, your team's doing pretty well. And in this case, they're winning. We'll see if they have balance on this drive. And the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Yeah, that one sailed on him. You've got to make sure you give your receiver a chance to come down inbounds because they are very gifted. They'll make the circus catches, but they make them out of bounds. That does you no good. Now it's Lindsey. And this may be a carbon copy as he'll again be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. Charles Harris in there to get him for a loss of nine yards, and that also leads to fourth down. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a defensive player of the year at the other, and they just locked people down. Now we get a peek at the captain of this offense heading back out there. And the stats on the screen tell the story. A great start. This defense, they made some good adjustments, so he's fallen off since. Have to like what they did at the half, but you also have to like the fact that they hung in there. And down he goes, Fitzpatrick sacked. Bradley Chubb leading the surge there as he drops him for a loss of six. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Now an open man. That's the tight end, Gesicki. It's complete. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. And that's when it's fun to play defense. When you're able to diagnose a play right from the beginning, get all your guys to the football and spill the play, that's when you have a lot of fun playing on that side of the ball. And it's caught by Parker. That goes as a gain of 36 on third down. Obviously, they're not where they want to be right now on the scoreboard. Big plays like that, though, that'll trend them in the right direction. Yeah, a few more like that, they'll be right back in the game. And if they can continue to do that, maybe they'll inspire their defense as well and get a few stops. Fitzpatrick to throw it. And Stills over the middle. 
And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and 10. start offense. Maybe anticipating a blitz, and we they jumped. It. Yeah, and if we saw it, you know that they saw it. The bad guys might have been coming on that play. Had to pick them up, and they jumped. A full start backs them up five, first and 15. 52 and 56, 52 and 56. Fitzpatrick again. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Parker. It's a pickup of 12. Second play in a row with a 12-yard gain. To throw again on second down, Fitzpatrick. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. Albert Wilson, the intended receiver there. And it's third and short. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him. That's the and those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Third and short yardage, Fitzpatrick. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Kosicki. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. The Dolphin passing game rolling here. They've got another first down. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Throwing Fitzpatrick. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Well, a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, Mike Kosicki. And that takes us from second to third down. And now offensively, it's third and ten. And I'm just thinking to myself, actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now, the play caller is thinking, what have I done before that's worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there was a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There was nothing available there for him. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? This is taken at his four. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. The 
Bronco offense now set to come back out onto the field. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away. Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Being chased out left. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, make the right choice. Get rid of it. Live to fight another down. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Flacco on the give to Lindsey. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season. And intercepted, maybe the turning point they need. Picked up by Eric Rowe. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Two-score game here in the fourth, and that pick, it kind of keeps the door ajar, doesn't it? It does, and you wonder about their strategy because with a two-score lead, you would think maybe you're just sitting on it trying to drain some clock. It's almost like they felt like, hey, we've got a good cushion. We can keep pressing it. It ended up costing them. The Dolphins offense now heads back on the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Decent start to the drive there. Of course, they need the touchdown, two-point conversion, and a field goal. Yeah, those guys are into it. How about the guys on the sidelines? You see the coaches signaling, all the personnel groups up on the sideline, ready to go in and out of the game. They've got to condense their time now in order to try and get back into it. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. 11 yards there, first down. We'll definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. A first down throw for Fitzpatrick. Throw left side complete. It's Drake. The catch and run there, good for 16 the first. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. On first and 10, Fitzpatrick. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Now whistles and a flag, and I believe the Dolphin got going a little early. So that'll back him up five. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. From the gun, Fitzpatrick. Hit from behind, and he's going to be driven down. Von Miller able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Remember throughout my career here, defensive coaches always say, guys, you got to earn the right to rush the passer. Well, they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead, and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. So now after the sack, third and long, and Fitzpatrick and company, a little work to do. On third down, Drake. 
He finds an opening past the 40. And he's going to get this to the 40-yard line. They get 13, but it's not nearly enough. And it'll be fourth down. This offense really put themselves in a tough spot on first and second down, and needing long yardage to try and pick up a first down. And they ended up getting a great run. Explosive, picked up nice yardage. You don't expect to be in this situation on fourth down. But guess what? It all started with what happened on first and second down. Really put them behind the eight ball. And coming out now, the Broncos. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. So the solid run on first, and I would imagine no real hurry to run that second down play. No, it's all in your quarterback now. He's going to keep an eye on the play clock and lead things down, and he's not going to let the ball be snapped until it's inside three seconds left on the play clock. Unless, of course, you're playing a video game and trying to run it up on your friend. <laughs> nice touch. Cold-blooded, too. And the tackle there will go to Charles Harris. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. They'll try and run for it with Lindsey. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story to talk about after this one. This is Freeman on first and 10. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Uh, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Brandon, that's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. The Broncos on third down. Can't fault these numbers. Seven for nine thus far. This is third and four. Now Flacco. He's got Freeman here. It's complete. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. The drive stays alive, a third down gain of eight. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Oh, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Face mask. Certainly looked like Defense. it. Indeed, here come the flags. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, down. players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration. Not a good play. The penalty moves him into the red zone here on first and ten. Check four, check four. Check three, check three. A give running right, Lindsey. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. I think this defense tired of seeing him run the football on this D-line. Probably getting sick of the O-line as well. And as I'm watching this, I'm thinking about a conversation I had with Adam Gase, the head coach of the Miami Dolphins in the offseason. He told me that he asked his running backs, 
each week for their favorite runs. Give me your three top runs. And right now, you're seeing a guy is probably using his top runs to great advantage in this game. He is in a zone. They'll try to run with Lindsey. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. So reverse the celebration. We'll see if they have something else in their bag of tricks. And isn't that always tough to watch when they score and you see the excitement and then when they realize those points aren't going to count? Can they get it back together and find their way back to the end zone? It's a loss of two, now third down. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long, he's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. They do get eight out of the pitch and catch. However, it's fourth down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. The kick by McManus is good. And that will get the lead up to 14. So they settle for just the three. But clearly right now, anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off. But it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now let's talk about Kenyon Drake. And after a sluggish start, he's really bounced back. The numbers bear that out. And you're a baseball guy, partner. How many at-bats over the course of a baseball season? Oh, boy. Four about in the game. Yeah, about the four in the four game. Four times 162. 350 or so, right? Sometimes it takes a while for a guy to get going. That's my point. It's not the first few carries. You don't worry about that. As they go along, get that guy lathered up. Get those blocking assignments down. Those two-yard gains turn into bigger gains as the game moves along. And throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. He was trying to get that one to Kenny Stills. And it's second down. Here we go. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe he didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch as the arm there, the legs still there. This has been a tough game. Fitzpatrick. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Fitzpatrick. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. Play action now, Fitzpatrick. He's gonna let it fly. This is caught inside the 15. Give him 32 on the play. Here's Fitzpatrick. I know we love him. And this is caught. So it's a late touchdown, but maybe too late. Still a little time left on the clock, however. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. You got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. And this is going to be recovered by the hands team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And... I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 90% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as he'll stop him with 13 seconds left to play. 
Three down, three down. Yes. They'll go again with Lindsey. Oh, no, he lost the football. And this is picked up by the Dolphins. The 40. He's at the 30. 10. And can you believe this? A big mistake leads to a defensive touchdown. And they're a point away from tying this thing up. So they were down by a touchdown, probably just hoping the defense could hold them, maybe force the punt. Instead, they force the turnover and take it into the house. Well, the plan was perfect. That's exactly what they wanted. Instead, they got a lot more than that. Big time capitalization by taking the ball away and putting it in the end zone. A very important extra point there, up and good. And we may very well be headed to overtime. This is taken at his four. blows and we need some extra time here to decide who will be the victor 60 minutes just not enough some days to decide who's going to win the game and here in overtime if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown it's over if they don't we can still have some more football that's exactly right if they go down and kick a field goal the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and it gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. here this will here be a go. touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take oh, over. Miami. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game, because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now. The ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. That throw good for four. It's second down. And partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. So third down coming up. And Charles, I guess the question for me, where does four down territory begin possibly? I guess for me it begins if you have fourth and five or less because you've got to understand your team and know what your play calls are. What do you have that you think you're confident that you can pick up that type of yardage? It might be fourth and three for some teams, but I think anything under fourth and five, they'll think about going for it. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. That throw good for four. It's second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Throwing again on second down. Fitzpatrick, and that's off the mark, incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Opening drive of overtime, and now facing a third down at six. Big play coming up. Again, it's Fitzpatrick. They're able to locate Wilson. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. He's padding his already great numbers here in overtime. More importantly, though, moving his guys downfield. And I think that's exactly what's going through his head right now. Moving them downfield, putting them in a position to win the game. The stats, that's for the fantasy guys. <laughs> I know they're enjoying that show. Let's go, let's go. A 55-yard attempt, normally you'd say well within his range. A little surprised he came up short. And he knew it immediately, didn't he? They are so calibrated, aren't they? They can tell the touch, the feel. When they put the foot to the ball, whether it's going to be good or not, he knew immediately he didn't have that one. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. It is tough to complete pass against zone defenses. The windows that you see open, they shrink pretty rapidly. 
How about being able to hit a moving target against his zone before the next guy can get there and make a play on the ball? Not easy for any quarterback, no matter the situation. And there, the defense won the battle. And movement by one of the Broncos up front. And in comes the flag. And that'll set him back five. False start penalty certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Now a handoff for Lindsey. The second down play not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short game. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. Third and long for Joe Flacco. He's got a man. It's Sutton that's complete. That'll put him at 66 receiving yards now for the game. And he's got a first down. And you definitely could make the case we might not even be in overtime had he not thrown three interceptions in regulation. But looking better here so far in OT. Yeah, and when you think about what a coach is thinking at that point, because normally you've thrown three picks during the game, you might craft your play call to be a little more careful. Not in this case. The green light is still on for him. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. The safety, Rashad Jones, brings him down. They try to quick hit her inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. And he gets it down to the 32. It's interesting because when I'm watching college football and I'm evaluating guys for the draft now, my list of fullbacks, pure fullbacks, it's a very short list. I'm probably evaluating more punters and kickers now than I am fullbacks. It doesn't matter what you call the position, it's who you put there and there we saw completion. Give him a yard on the play and he's definitely short. It'll be fourth down in a few inches. Now the Dolphins are going to take another time out here. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. And that hits the right upright and carries away. It's no good. And that changes everything here in OT. So possible disaster there. It's an empty possession, and there's no worse time to have an empty possession than the first drive of overtime. Yeah, and remember the situation now, Brandon. It's sudden death from here on out. You can bet he's begging for a chance to redeem himself. But the question now is, will that chance ever come? Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10. Drake will start the drive on the ground. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Interior of that line blocked really well on that run, but also the two tight ends, they blocked well too. Not only have they scouted the line of scrimmage, with their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Fitzpatrick now from the 50. And he finds your man with a crossing route. And he is brought down, but not before reaching the 30. That one a gain of 20 in a first down. They go back to that well. He's had a great game. Defensively, they haven't been able to stop him. Same thing here in overtime. And sometimes that goes to the play caller's ego because a lot of times you have so many different plays you want to call. But when you spot a matchup that's working for you or a player that has the hot hand, keep giving it to him. That tells me you're mature as a play caller and it's working for them in overtime. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. Now a handoff for Drake. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action, hit them over the top. Here we go, here we go. 
On third down, Fitzpatrick. And Allen's got it. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. And on that last play there, he's over 400 yards passing now. Do you know what that generally means? Success. <laughs> that, and it means you really didn't miss opportunities. Usually very accurate. The ball's getting to the right place. Guys are making yardage after the catch to help you out that way. I mean, the whole team has picked it up. And don't forget, that means the offensive line has had to pass protect pretty well, too. Everyone dialed in. Maybe a little fortunate there. That was leaking a little, maybe leaking a lot, but he got it. Yeah, he actually was able to make it work. How about the body language, though, right? As he watched that ball leak to the right, trying to, trying to bring it back in, and had just enough to get it done. Well, we thought this game would be a good one. It did not disappoint into overtime, and it took the field goal to win it. And we always pay lip service to how important it is to play defense. And usually we focus on the big offensive pyrotechnics, right? But in this case, they got the ball back on defense, gave themselves a chance, and they capitalized on it with a victory. And I don't care what distance that field goes from in overtime. The knees are always knocking, but he <laughs> pushed it through. Not only that, think about your snapper, your holder. A lot of nerves for them, too, because they have to do their job in order to give him one last chance to put a foot to it. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Dolphins are winners here as we say so long from South Florida.